Embarcadero RAD Studio 2010 introduces expanded database connectivity, including our first time support of the Firebird SQL database. We also have updated drivers for the most popular databases. Also, our DataSnap multi-tier framework has been updated for easier interactions via industry standard communication protocols. I'm in the hallway outside Stephen Blass's office. Steve makes the database drivers for the DB Express framework. I hope he has a few minutes to show you what's new in DB Express and the database driver. As you can see in the Data Explorer, we have a Firebird node, and I have a couple of connections that I've already configured. We support you know, both 2.1 and 1.5, so I'm just retrieving some tables here. I'm going to drag and drop a table that contains a big int onto a VCL form. Um, as you can see, in the object inspector, here is the Firebird driver with its driver properties. I will drop some uh, controls and I will hook them up. But, uh, the big end type is uh, a Firebird data type. You can do anything with uh, Firebird that you can with the other drivers. I also did some work on our Microsoft SQL Server driver to support new data types in Microsoft SQL Server 2008. Here is a list of tables. This is a table that contains the date time offset type, which was a new, a new type in Microsoft SQL Server 2008. We'll just do a um, select star from table on a table containing that data type. So as you can see, this is a table containing just an integer primary key and a column which uh, has the date time offset type. So thanks, Steve, for giving everybody a quick sneak peek at the database drivers and the new support for databases in RAD Studio 2010. Well, thanks, David. I'm happy to bring uh, RAD Studio support to the Firebird community. With RAD Studio 2010, you get native, high-performance access to all the popular databases. With the robust, powerful DB Express database framework, you can easily create applications using visual controls or in code. While I'm up here in R&D, let's go down the hall and see if we can take a peek at how RAD Studio 2010 gives you even more choices of multi-tier application architectures and connectivity. Hey Jim, Steve just showed everyone what's new in databases for RAD Studio 2010. Do you have a few minutes to show people what's new in multi-tier architectures and connectivity with DataSnap 2010? Yeah, I have some time. Come on in. All right, I'll start out by showing you one of our new wizards, File New Other. Under DataSnap Server, we have two new wizards. The first one, called DataSnap Server, is the one I'll de demonstrate first. In here, we can choose the kind of application we want to create, uh, as well as the kind of uh, communication protocols we want to support. So for this example, I'll create a console application, and I'll enable these checkboxes just to show you what it's going to be created and uh, generate a server method class derived from T persistent. All right, let's take a look at what the wizard did for us. So some of these components are familiar to you from DataSnap 2009, such as the server, TCP transport, and the server class components. The new component is the DSHTP service and also the DSHTP uh, service authentication manager. Let's look at the properties on the DSHTTP service component. We have a property called DS host name, and I'm going to set that to blank. If I left this at localhost, this service component would act as a proxy between a TCP service and HTTP. The other thing I'm going to do is change the port. I'm going to have this uh, HTTP service running on port 880. So now let's go ahead and run this application. Let's go ahead and use the Data Explorer within Delphi to connect to this client. All right, we have two connections now available to us. We have the TCP connection, which works, and we also have the HTTP connection, which works as well. We can see in the Data Explorer that in addition to the sort of admin methods, there's one server method provided by this DataSnap server. You can see we have a, a very simple method that echoes a string. Let's go back to the server explorer and we'll view the parameters and we can go ahead and execute the server method. And here we see the results. We have another wizard called the DataSnap Web Broker application. In this wizard we'll select ISAPI and once again we'll choose T persistent as our base class. And let's look at the web module that was created for us. On this web module we have the server and the server class components just like on our standalone DataSnap server application. But we also have a new component here called the 
HTTP Web Dispatcher. Let's look at the properties for this component. We'll set the host name to blank because we don't want to use this as a proxy. And we don't need to set the HTTP port because this application will be running under IIS and using port 80 on my system. Let's go over to the server methods class and you can see that the wizard generated the same simple server method. We'll build the project. Now let's go over to IIS. Here's the virtual directory that I've configured. We'll browse to that directory. And here's our ISAPI DLL. Browsing to it uh, just displays a simple message. Okay, let me bring up Delphi Prism and we'll look at the HTTP connectivity within Delphi Prism. All right, let's go over to the Server Explorer and we'll add a connection. We're going to choose Data Snap, HTTP, localhost, port 80. Now, just like in the Data Explorer, we have access to our server method. We can go ahead and um, execute. And another thing I'd like to show you is, is a feature that we've added since uh, Delphi 2009, which is the ability to create client proxies in Delphi Prism. We'll right-click on the connection and choose Generate Client Proxy. And this is going to generate the Prism code that makes it easy to call your server methods. You can call HTTP servers from other clients, such as a web browser. Here's our server, and we're going to just uh, add a little bit onto the address. So we're going to say data snap, rest, there's the name of our server, the name of our server method, and a string. When I hit return, what's happened is I've made an HTTP request to my data snap server, and I've received the result in JSON. Our data snap HTTP support has built-in support for REST. I have a data snap server that has a few server methods. So here you can see the server methods that I've declared in this project. Uh, reverse string, transform string, and reverse words in stream. Reverse string is very simple. Uh, one line of code to just reverse our string and return it to the caller. The, the next one shows a new type that we've added to DataSnap 2010 tJSON object. And there's a, a number of other JSON types. And these types allow you to pass JSON back and forth between your DataSnap clients and servers. This is a very convenient way to represent complex types in your native applications. And JSON also works very well in uh, JavaScript and other types of clients, including PHP. Go ahead and run this application, and I'll show you the JavaScript client example that I have. OK, so let me bring up my JavaScript REST client. I have pointed my browser at a static HTML page that I have on my system. First, we'll call the reverse string method. Here's the JSON result. What's happening is this client is, is parsing that JSON and, and updating the test value so that I can keep reversing the string by clicking the button. This radio button to call the transform string method. And if you recall, the transform string method actually builds up a JSON object. So here we can see the JSON object in, in, in text that's returned by the REST request. And again, the JavaScript within this page is parsing that JSON object and extracting the reverse value. This is a very simplistic example, but I think it illustrates the flexibility that REST support gives you. The last feature that I'd like to show you, David, is demonstrated by this reverse words and stream server method. And this server method has a type that's new to DataSnap 2010 called TDBX callback. And what this type is used for is when you want the server to be able to call back to the client. In this example, what I'm doing is passing a stream to the server from the client, and as the server processes the stream, it's calling back the client for every word it encounters. Steve and Jim just showed you a few of the new capabilities in Rad Studio 2010 for database programming, for multi-tier development, and for connectivity. There's lots more that you can take advantage of in Rad Studio 2010 to build the applications that you need in your IT infrastructure. With Rad Studio 2010, you can go further and get there faster.